What's up guys, we're back in the kitchen um, with some potatoes. Uh, I've got five things that we're gonna try and do with potatoes and we're gonna start off with mashed potatoes. Traditionally what you do is you boil potatoes for like four days or something and then you peel them and then you make mashed potatoes and you know here we're just gonna say screw tradition. I bake these, bake them in my crock pot actually and uh, if you don't know how to do that, I'll post a link to my crock pot video down below and we'll go over that. But I've got a few of them cut up already and just gonna cut this one, but just kind of cut them in quarters. And since they're baked, the peeling comes off pretty easy already. Just peels off there. And we'll get these in a pot. And these have kind of cooled back down a little bit since I baked them. So I'm gonna put some milk and some butter and some salt and pepper, garlic powder, and a little mayonnaise in there. And then put them back on the stove, just kind of bring them back up to a simmer, and then we'll mash them. All right, so I got uh, three or four medium potatoes in there and a half stick of butter. And I've got equal parts garlic powder and pepper and probably twice that much salt in there. Uh, I don't want to overdo it with the seasoning because I've had people sit down and then the first thing they do is put salt on their food and they're like, man, this is really salty. And I'm like, man, I really don't like you. Um, so that's about a tablespoon or so of mayonnaise in there. Daddy, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of milk in there. Too. Okay, babe, be careful, don't pour all of it. And uh, all right, and then I'm gonna get this back on the stove Warm it up, start mixing it, and if it's a little thick, I can add some more milk. All right, so I've got everything kind of combined in here, and I've just got this on low speed. It's gonna sling stuff around if you start out on high speed, but everything's starting to cream up a little bit. I'm just gonna work this up as I'm going now. And you could leave it like this and have it more of like a rusticy kind of mashed potato, but I'm gonna get these pretty creamy. i just work my way up with them. All right, so they just came out, uh, nice and fluffy, just potatoes. Um, I'm using russet potatoes on all these just because that's what I had. You could use red potatoes or whatever, but uh, for all this, it's going to be russet for me. All right, we're back, and we got some of those mashed potatoes. Um, and really, <clears throat> leftover mashed potatoes are terrible, um, just to be honest. If you heat them up in the microwave or whatever, they're awful. So what you can do with leftover mashed potatoes is put a little flour in there, probably about two tablespoons per cup. Probably about two tablespoons per cup. You wanna put some flour in there? Mm -hmm. And uh, then one egg per cup of potatoes, mashed potatoes. And do you wanna get that? Mm -hmm. Be careful. And then we'll just mix this all up. And I've got a skillet with just a little bit of oil in the bottom of it. And uh, what we're gonna do is make um, like potato cakes. They're fried potato cakes or potato patties. I don't know, you may have heard of them, you may have not. Think pancake shaped hash brown taste. All right, we're just gonna spoon out some of this that we've mixed up into this just shallow hole that we've got. And uh, they're gonna cook pretty fast, a minute aside, maybe a little less than that. And uh, what you come out with, like I said, is a uh, potato cake. And um, it's really the only way to eat leftover mashed potatoes. All right, I got a few of these fried up and uh, they turned out pretty good. And like I said, that's just the way to eat leftover potatoes. You could throw some, uh, some cheese in there with them or some sausage or hamburger meat. And you can actually do these on the waffle iron. I did that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I didn't do it tonight because I've got another episode coming out in a couple weeks with some leftover stuff and there's going to be some super cool stuff I do on a waffle iron, so I'm saving that for later. But anyway, we're going to get on to the next dish now. Alright, so next we're going to tackle some french fries. And if you've ever tried to make french fries from potatoes, they probably turned out terrible. Because when you throw raw potatoes into oil, it lowers the temperature, something, 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 the potatoes come out like flimsy and crappy, or if you cook them long enough to get crispy, they're burnt, because that's what it is. So there's a method called double frying, and that's really the preferred method. Like you throw them in there, you cook them, you bring them out, the oil comes back up to temperature, and then you refry them, and you get crispy 
potatoes that aren't burnt. And what I've done to get around that is bake these potatoes first. They're already cooked, so all I do is slice them in half and then just come through and slice like quarter inch thick french fries. They're a little big, kind of like steak fries, um, and they're hard to slice again that way because they're already cooked and they're a little bit fragile, but they're really good and they get good and crispy when you cook them. All right, I've got my oil here. It's, it's pretty warm. I don't have a temperature gauge in it, but it needs to be about 350. There's no need to get any hotter. Or you'll burn your oil, but uh, you definitely want to hear that sound when you drop the potatoes in there. And they'll cook for three or four minutes probably, start to float, and you'll look at them, and they'll start turning golden, and you can bring them out. All right, just got these out of the skillet. Um, like I said, I did wound up doing a couple of batches just because the skillet's not big enough to do 14 potatoes at once. I didn't really have 14 potatoes, but anyway, um, they're just they're just a lot crispier, like I said, than you would get on a once fried potato that you tried to do. Can I have some of that? Mm -hmm. mm. And then I just hit them with a little bit of red pepper, black pepper, and some salt, and uh, they're pretty good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. All right, this next thing is uh, some loaded twice-baked potato skins. And what I did it, with those same baked potatoes, I just took a spoon, kind of hollowed out most of the inside of the potato. Then I put uh, a couple of tablespoons of ranch and some salt and pepper and some bacon that I just cooked and then made some bacon bits out. And what I'm going to do is just fill these. And if there's any cheese left over there, We'll sprinkle a little cheese on top. Got my oven preheated to 350. And uh, everything in this is already cooked, you know, since they're baked potatoes already. And the bacon, I cooked it. So all we're really doing is melting cheese. It's probably only gonna take like five minutes. And then uh, we'll get them out and take a look at them. Out of the oven, um, it went five or six minutes, something like that. Cheese got melted and they're done. Uh, cut those open and it's just like twice baked potato casserole potato skins. There you go. Nothing to it. Alright, so this last thing I've never made. I've eaten a pretty good bit of it, but I've never attempted to make it. It's gnocchi, which is like halfway between a noodle and a dumpling. But you take about a cup of a potato that you've mashed up, and then you add two cups of flour and an egg, and then you knead it into like this really dry dough. Wrap it up for like 20 minutes or so, so says the internet, so that's what I did. And apparently it's easier to work with if you only work with like a quarter of it at a time. So I'm gonna cut this into quarters. And then hopefully it won't fall apart on me, but I'm just gonna roll this into like a rope type deal. All right, so we had some technical difficulties with the gnocchi dough, and uh, I went to roll it and it was just falling apart, it wasn't working. So I put the quarter of it in a Ziploc bag and then smashed it to the bottom as best I could and just flattened it out about a half inch thick. And it was a little bit more than a half inch this way, so I just cut it in half and I've got it laid there. So pretend this is a rope. And we're gonna keep going with this and hope it works. If it doesn't, you know, that's that's why we're trying new things and cooking. So we could cut these in about uh, half inch cubes, something like that. Uh, gonna kind of roll those with flour. They're not too sticky. I may have plenty on them anyway But again, this is what the internet said to do. So that's what I'm doing and I'm on the internet and I'm telling you to do this There's some like Italian technique or something where you get this on a fork and you roll it down and it comes out perfect And I'm not even gonna attempt that because I saw what happened here. So I saw where another guy just took a fork Smashed it down like that. This is probably also not gonna work because I'm super lucky and then when he got it to there he rolled that into a shape, and that's what comes out when you roll it down a fork anyway. So I was like, oh, that's so much easier. So I'm gonna do that with all these, and the reason you do that is sauce sticks to it better or something. So we're gonna see how this turns out. All right, so after like some yelling and breaking things, I got these to turn out kind of, um, I don't know, kind of like what they look like on the internet. So I got uh, boiling salt water, and I'm just gonna dump these in. And when they start floating, apparently they're done. So we'll look at them when they start floating. All 
All right, so those cook like super fast. Um, I mean, like basically they hit the bottom of the pot. I turned around and I looked and they were floating. So uh, I just hit them with a little bit of like uh, some marinara. And you can see in there, they actually turn out pretty good. I'm actually, I don't really like noodles. And they don't really taste like noodles, but they're good. I mean, and I'm, I'm pretty okay with me doing that and that being my first time, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas of things that you can do with potatoes. Things you can do with already cooked potatoes, as a matter of fact. So you can come into whatever with cooked potatoes and that'll cut your cooking time at least in half, maybe more than that. And you wind up with some pretty cool things that you can do with nothing, basically. Anyway, that's all I got for today.